What's going on guys? Great Disciple back with another video. In the background, you're going to be watching a gameplay on Knockout. I'm not really going to speak on the game. It's over 80 kills. This was my second time playing on Knockout and my first full match. So I hope you enjoy it. What we're going to do today is continue our journey through the addiction to pornography. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be playing off the last video that I did. So if you didn't see it, please go back and watch it. It's when Dr. James Dobson sat down with Ted Bundy and interviewed him and some of the things that Ted Bundy spoke about. Now, I was kind of surprised. A lot of you didn't know who Ted Bundy was. So let me tell you a little bit about this guy. All right. He was your quintessential man next door. You know, just a normal looking guy. Well spoken. He looked decent. He didn't look like your pervert or some sexual predator like you would picture in your head. Just an average guy. And let me tell you what he did. Um, it is, from what we know, he killed 28 women and girls. And the way that he did it at the time, you know, he was a law student from here to here, you know, but at the time of when most of these murders took place, he worked at a medical supply company. And I think he was in sales. And what he did was he took a cast from the company and he would go to, you know, public locations and he would, um, like colleges, and he would be carrying around books. And when he saw a girl and it was a, in a good position, he would drop the books or fumble the books and drop them on the ground, hoping to prey on her sensitivity. And she would come over and help him with the books and he would ask her if she would help him over to his car. And either from there he would incapacitate her or he would ask her or say something along the lines of, you know, I live two miles up the road. Would you be willing to drive me over there and help me get the books into my, my apartment? And once in the car, he would incapacitate her and do horrific things to him and just cast their bodies out in the fields and the animals would disperse the bones and such. It was awful. He was actually caught on a fluke. It was a routine traffic stop and something in the car caught the cop's eye and it went from there and that's how they caught him. Otherwise, he would keep on going. I mean, and he's not the only one. There are many serial killers out there. And uh, th the reason why I showed the interview was to illustrate not that pornography is what caused him to do that. Pornography was a jumping off point. Pornography was the trigger. Pornography was the push that he needed to go that extra mile. I know you guys are thinking, what? No, no, no. That's still, he's a psychopath. Okay. All right. There's obviously something wrong with him. Let me explain the position on that. Okay. What happens is, if we view pornography as an addiction, which I think at this point, most people realize that it is. In fact, it's been studied and tested that the addiction to pornography is on par with the addiction to crack cocaine and heroin. That's how severe this can get for people. Like any drug, the potency wanes after use, meaning that you either need more of it or you need harder amounts or larger amounts of it in order to satisfy the urge within you. So what we're going to do is we're going to view pornography. We're going to start how most people do. It's in softcore. Softcore is maybe Playboy, Penthouse, Hustler magazines, which I don't even know if people even look at these anymore. Um, and and that, that's where softcore starts. You know, just, just the basic stuff, things that you used to be able to see whenever you would go to a grocery store or a gas station. I, I don't know if they still sell them there or not. I've never noticed. I never looked for it. But from there, what happens is is you become desensitized to it. You know, just looking at the pictures or just seeing a breast or something like that just doesn't do enough for you. You need to see more. And that's when you start to progress from softcore into hardcore and you start looking for particular things. You know, maybe it'll start on cable watching HBO or Cinemax or Showtime and eventually that's not enough. You need to see more. So then you start going to Triple X and, and you start seeing actual pornographic films. And even those, there's even um, an increase in fierceness of them just in the basic stuff. But eventually what happens is you get to a point where you have literally seen everything that a man and woman can do with one another all the positions, everything that you can imagine. And uh, for some, that's all it will ever go to. For others, they're gonna jump the fire trail. They're gonna cross over a barrier where it's no longer satisfying to them just to see what a man and woman can do. They go into what's called the perversions. You know, now what? Well, the perversions are where we come into the more dangerous things. We come into child pornography, bestiality, uh, homosexual violence, group sex, maybe incest, maybe you'll see some mutilation along the way. 
I mean, think about today. Well, let me tell you something. You know, we talk about child pornography and people are so appalled by it. Did you know that child pornography was not outlawed in the United States until 1983? Back then they called it chicken porn. Um, it was a billion dollar industry in 1983. Think about that for a little bit. Now it's illegal, of course. You know, you talk about sadomasochism, S&M and, and, and that kind of stuff. I mean, there was just a, a major budget film produced called Fifty Shades of Grey where, where it's all about S&M. I mean, that's a perversion. Do you guys realize that? That That is sexual depravity right there. I mean, that, that's the abuse of another person for the pleasure of yourself. There's something wrong with that. I mean, you're seeing this progression of where pornography can take us. And that was the point of the video. Now, keep in mind that this interview with Ted Bundy took place in 1989. And here's Ted Bundy speaking about how these hardcore porns that, that he saw affected him. And he was appalled by what was on cable television at the time. Cable television back then. And that was like Die Hard Part 1. I mean, that, that's what was on cable. That's nothing today. That's nothing compared to what kids have access to. Dr. James Dobson would speak about how the access that kids had by telephone to order things. They don't even have to order things anymore, you guys. You can jump on the internet and in three buttons, bam, you are looking at some of the most hardcore pornography that you can possibly imagine. Everything is at our fingertips these days. It is no holds bar. Anything that you want to see, you can access via Google. And if not Google, you can go into the black market, you can go into the torrent, and, and you can find just about anything and everything to your heart's desire pornographic-wise. That was the point of the video to show you that there is a progression that takes place in the addiction to pornography. It starts softcore, moves to hardcore, and for some, a percentage, you will jump the hardcore fire trail and you will go into the perversions. And that's where it, get da it gets dangerous. All right, you guys, I'm going to stop there. If you got anything out of it, hit the thumbs up button. As always, leave a comment down below. We'll talk about it and subscribe for more. Have a great day. Bye.